Is Minshew Mania back tonight? I think so, man. I think Minshew's going to get the potentially get the start. I don't know, man. The, the Eagles don't have much to play for. Cowboys have a little bit to play for. We are going to talk to you about some of the backups that you that you should be interested in playing tonight. There's a lot of great value, obviously, but there's a lot up in the air tonight. So we're going to need to be paying attention right going up right until lock, being on Twitter, watching some of the warm-ups, figuring things out. But this is a glorified preseason game. Um, so, hey, it's showdown, man. A lot of variants. Welcome to the Edge DFS, guys. Cowboys at the Eagles. It's going to be a cold one, about 20 degrees out there in Philadelphia. My name is Tyson Smith, joined by Ellie Hernandez. Ellie, we're back. We we took uh, some time off for, for the holidays and the fact that there was a lot of bad showdown games mixed in there yeah. as well. Uh, Ellie, what's going on with you, man? How you doing? Uh, doing pretty good. Uh, if you guys are watching uh, or listening on our other show, uh, it's not necessarily DFS related. Uh, purchased a new home, so it was a little busy um, the last week. Still busy. In addition, yeah, still busy, right? In addition to some of the stuff that uh, you were talking about regarding the games, they weren't exactly uh, um, barnstormers or anything. Yeah. I don't even know if that makes sense. Barnstormers, I'm thinking of Kurt Warner and the <laughs> Iowa Barnstormers. Anyways, um, so Kurt Warner, if you're listening, uh, we appreciate you. Um, <laughs> great work. Uh, back on track here. So, uh, you know, I, I think we're both really excited to do uh, NFC East Dallas Cowboys game. Um, not not a big Cowboys fan myself, but I, I do think that there is some stuff we need to discuss here. Um, I, I think that their uh, uh, their seeding uh, scenarios are a little interesting for Dallas. Um, I think they're kind of a long shot. So hopefully you and I can work through that a little bit here um, and see what what we want to do with this uh, this mess that. Yeah, really, this entire day is turned into with both these games. Exactly. Spoiler alert: um, Kenneth Gainwell play Kenneth Gainwell. <laughs> they have the, the as of now, based on what I'm seeing, uh, they just came out with well, not they didn't come out with their inactives, but they announced whether or not they were going to pull anybody off the COVID list. And no, they didn't pull anybody back. So as far as the as far as the Eagles go, so the Eagles as of now have two running backs going. So and we have we have I think three or four running backs on the other side. You know Zeke's probably not going to get a lot of playing time. So we got to talk about how to handle this. What we're going to do is go through each position quickly and talk about some of these players that we like, and then we're going to spend a lot of time building as well. We're not going to have a, a, a fade of the night. We're not going to have a captain of the night. I know it's still up there on the top, but we're going to skip through that to try to get through this as quick as we can so we can build together. All right. So injuries. Let's talk about injuries here real quick. So, obviously, there's a lot to talk about here. <clears throat> Miles Sanders is out. He's been out. Uh, Michael Gallup, out for the season. Tony Pollard is out for this game with a foot injury. And then you have all these guys who didn't get activated off the COVID list. You've got Dallas Goddard, Boston Scott, Jordan Howard. And I think that's about it. Um, you, got, you do have Blake Jarwin coming back uh, with a hip injury. He, he will be playing today. So look, Ellie, we basically don't have any running backs for Philadelphia. You got the rookie running back Gainwell, who's going to get the start, and you also have a guy named Jason Huntley at two hundred bucks. But look, Kenneth Gainwell sixteen hundred bucks. This this is one of the best running running teams in in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I don't know that they're going to need to lean on Gardner Minshew too much in the past game. They might just hand the ball off and call it a day. I don't know. What are your thoughts on these running backs? They, you have to consider playing both of these guys, and especially Gainwell, heavily, right? Yeah, man, I like Kenneth Gainwell. Uh, 1,600, he's finally in a smash spot. He's going to get the start. Um, so uh, I wish I wish this was like still best ball season because I had a decent amount of exposure to Kenneth Gainwell there. But I, I, I like him. I think that he's in a great spot. Half their squad's out for COVID-19. They're pretty much the Utah Jazz today. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how you get off of it. And uh, you're right. I'm interested in Jason Huntley at 200 bucks. But honestly, I think uh, Corey Clement at 200 bucks is interesting uh, on the other side of the ball. Um, I know yeah, that sure. uh, they may have um, Zeke or uh, may- maybe even another like practice squad guy available or something, but uh, this is a 
this is a revenge game. So uh, yeah, revenge for game. Clement. Yeah, for Clement, exactly. <laughs> yeah. When I saw Clement's name, I was like, okay, yeah. I just immediately assumed he was on the Eagles, and then I was like, oh wait, I completely forgot he was on the Cowboys. All right, so th- so look, we've talked about injuries here. Um, we'll get into the breakdown in one second. First, throw us a like, guys. Help us out. We're trying to hit 500 subscribers. Hit that subscribe button. We're going to be here throughout the playoffs. We're going to have some collaborations with some other channels. And also, we have a new a new show that we come out with on Thursday nights where we're just talking about the previous week. And we're just shooting the shit hanging out. It's a really fun time. We're going to be live. So hang out with us then. But for now, let's get into the breakdown. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong button. Break it down. All right. So... The question here, Ellie, for you, before we even talk about quarterbacks, you have to assume that the so the Eagles really have nothing to play for at all. Like they cannot, they literally cannot move up or down in the playoff standings. But the Cowboys do. A lot of crazy things can happen, but the Cowboys could move up. So in my opinion, I'm just guessing here because everyone's keeping their mouth shut on this. The Cowboys might play a half with their starters, or they might establish a lead potentially and try to win this game and let the chips fall where they may on Sunday. Um, but I don't think the Eagles will be doing that. And there's a chance that Jalen Hurts might not even start the game. I don't know. I, 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 why, why risk it? Why risk Hurts? Why not just play Gardner Minshew? And look, Gardner Minshew at 9K, this, guy's, this guy is auditioning for a starting job next year. He's going to come out and he's going to ball in this game. I'm, I, I want a lot of Gardner Minshew. So to, to send it back to you, thoughts on what I said about the motivations between these teams. You prob- We can probably afford to, to play some Dallas starters, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know how we're really going to get away from it. Here, Here's the thing, and I'll kind of summarize it because we don't need to get into each scenario that's available here. Um, but uh, long story short, the Dallas Cowboys are going to need some help. They need the Bucks, Rams. Cardinals pretty much all to lose or some variation of that to lose to, to boost their seeding to three or two. Um, so I think uh, it's worth keeping an eye on some of these guys because we don't know what Mark, Mike McCarthy is going to do. I think, um, I think that he's going to start. Everybody He's going to give his team an opportunity to maybe bump up one spot Um but again, like it, it now you're starting to affect the matchups, right? So, uh, right now they're on pace to play, it looks like, uh, um, well, Cardinals, so if they right? get the four seed, yeah, if they get the four seed, they're on pace to play the Cardinals. Um, if they stay where they are, they're going to play, uh, whoever loses the NFC West division. So, uh, honestly, I think that's a tough matchup. So, I do think the Dallas Cowboys do have some incentive to try and get, uh, uh, the 49ers, uh, they have a slim shot at getting the two seed and end up playing the Philadelphia Eagles again. But I, I think that they have some incentive to not want to play the Rams or the Cardinals. Yeah. So uh, I, I do think that uh, we probably see some of these starters. And um, I don't know, man, if, the, if that's the case, like if Dak Prescott plays a half, there is a chance that, uh, you know, he has 250 yards and three touchdowns, right? That's what we would expect for them to try and do is get up quick and uh, just hold the lead for the rest of the game. Yeah. But um, just on the other side of the ball with Philadelphia, uh, one thing uh, that I'm seeing on Roto Grinders here, uh, lineup HQ, they don't even have uh, uh, Jalen Hurts in the player pool right now. Oh, wow. Interesting. So they must know something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw something on Twitter that uh, said that uh, to expect Gardner Minshew pretty heavily tonight. So. I think that's going to happen. I, I'm pretty sure that it, it, even maybe one series for for Hertz, but I think that might be the most. I'm not going to touch Hertz. I don't even. I won't even have him in my player pool. I just. I, I just yeah. don't think that you, that you need him. We're going to need to find ways to spend our salary tonight. It's going to actually be hard, maybe to to spend our salary. Um, and obviously, look, we're recording this a few hours before. I think it's about 4.40 right now for us, uh, Eastern time. So things will come out, but we have a lot of the news that we need to start the show. Um, another thing to mention here, what was I going to say about the Cowboys? I forgot what I was going to say. I'll, 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 I'll try to remember it, but let's just jump right into Oh, you know what? That's what I was going to say. So last week, look, another reason to think that maybe the Cowboys will come out and start slinging it. They got, they got beat by the, by the Cardinals last week at home. And they did not look good, man. You do not want to go into the playoffs leaving on that note. Maybe they yeah. use this as a get-right game, even though they're going against backups. 
they might just jam it down their throat and try to score as much as they can in that first half and then pull their guys. That is a possibility. And I don't have a problem playing Prescott, Gallup, or not Gallup, but Cooper, you know, Ze- a little bit of Zeke, and, you know, feathering these guys in a little bit. All right, so let's get into this quarterback. <clears throat> like we were talking about here, I'm actually going to uncheck Jalen Hurts. That's just me personally. I'm not going to risk it. I don't think you need to. Um, maybe a little bit of Dak Prescott. Obviously, Gardner Minshew is my number one guy here. I think he's going to get all the snaps, potentially. And like I said, he has a lot of motivation, personally. He's not going to be with his team next year. This really, I, I, I'm sure he's on a one-year deal, right? I mean, that's... I don't know his contract situation, but the bottom line is he's going to want to be a starter next year one way or another. So he's going to go out and probably ball out. Uh, can we talk about Cooper Rush? Are you interested in Cooper Rush here if he gets any second second half uh, snaps? He did okay in a, in a showdown slate earlier this year. Are you interested in him? Yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, until we know officially like kind of what Dallas is going to do, I just think everybody's in play. Um, I, I'm really not crossing anybody out on that side of the ball. Uh, Cooper Rush could absolutely end up starting the game again. Dallas does need some a lot of help uh, for for them to kind of move up in the seating. So it, I just I don't know that Mike McCarthy is really ready to commit to that. It might just be a you know get healthy, stay healthy week. Uh, Amari Cooper is like perennially hurt. Like he's yeah. con- he's like Julio Jones, constantly yeah. questionable. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know it, Dak's coming off of his obvious injury. It it may just be a time to sit and chill and then just play whoever they end up with. So um, Cooper Rush will be in my player pool. Um, I'll remove him based on kind of what I think uh, uh, is going to end up happening based on whatever uh, news we get out of Dallas. And if we don't get any, um, then I'm really going to have to kind of take a stand. I think there's going to be some maybe lineups where I fade uh, um, just the Dallas quarterbacks in general. And maybe I have 15% of my lineups are going to have Cooper Cush, cut or Cooper Rush, whatever his goddamn <laughs> name is. Yeah, <laughs> Cooper Cush. <clears throat> Um, and then, uh, you know, and then maybe I'll have 40% of my lineups with Dak Prescott, but th- this might be a slate where you're just, uh, submitting several variations of lineups kind of built for several scenarios, um, and just hoping one hits and the other's probably dead. Even if Dak Prescott plays a half, I still think considering the fact that we have to spend some salary, he could still be in the optimal. If he goes out and throws for two two touchdowns and throws for you know even 150 yards and two touchdowns and rushes for 20 30 yards, he could still be in the optimal. It's a cold yep. it's a cold day. I mean I don't see that this game is going to be like a shootout necessarily. So you got to consider that. Um, but I'm not necessarily going to touch the Philadelphia starters. Let's get to running backs here. A lot to talk about. We're not going to go team by team. We're going to just cruise through this. This is sorted by by median projection here. So as you see, Kenneth Gainwell is at the top. And he's 1,600. You've got Kenneth Gainwell. <clears throat> you've got Jason Huntley. Those are the only two running backs on this team right now. I, I don't have a problem with play, playing both together. Or maybe you take a stand. Kenneth Gainwell will probably be the highest owned player on the slate. You, you yeah. probably think about it. I mean, I don't think that's controversial. You could. We don't really know how good he is. He has three good games this year. It's a, it's a crowded backfield. You could gain some leverage by throwing in a little bit more Jason Huntley at 200. But I don't have a problem with playing both of these guys together. Uh, specifically, at least lock in Kenneth Gainwell. I think that's going to be the obvious choice here, right, for uh, for Philly? Yeah, man. 1,600, I'm not going to overthink this. I'm just going to throw him in. It's pretty much a free square. Uh, what are they going to do? Uh, Jason Huntley's not going to get 95% of the snaps. Yeah. I and mean, even if this is a 50-50 scenario, then to your point, I think you, you better pray for a handcuff. Um, you'd have to come up with a pretty convincing scenario for me not to play Kenneth Gainwell or Jason Huntley. It's it, yeah. it's pretty much locked in for me. Um, I think uh, I think the interesting one is Ezekiel Elliott. Um, uh, just what I'm seeing on uh, uh, RG, uh, his ownership projection is a little bit higher than what I would anticipate for a game like this. So um, if he's really coming in uh, as high as he's projected, then – I have no problem fading him. I just don't expect much work from him tonight. Um, and, you know, I I also like Corey Clement at $200. So uh, it just seems like a reasonable trade-off for me. And then you can play a guy like Dak in CD or whatever, right? If Dak has 180 yards and two touchdowns, 
Um, it's very possible it's all to to one of those receivers or two touchdowns go to Cooper uh, uh, CD. So I, I, I think that's the way to go. You take Dak and a pass catcher, and then you kind of just run it back with as, as much Philly as you can get. Gardner, Kenneth Gainwell, and then Quez Watkins. Just play guys. Like, salary is not going to matter on this slate. Yeah. So I, I think you can get a stud, um, a, a, you know, two studs from the offense on Dallas, and then grab four Philly players and just jam them in there. So Zeke Elliott, 8,400. He's backed up by Jaquan Hardy or Corey Clement, Jaquan Hardy, and Ito Smith. Hardy and Ito Smith were were brought up from the practice squad. Look, at a certain situation, whether it's at the end of the first quarter, after the first drive, at the end of this half, whatever it is that they decide to pull their starters, then Corey Clement's the guy, and then now you got to have, you maybe have Jaquan Hardy getting the Tony Pollard role, that kind of thing. So I think all, all these guys are in play, and especially a guy like Hardy or Corey Clement is probably going to be the second most popular guy because he's 200 bucks and he's mm-hmm. he's potentially going to get most of the snaps in this game um but a guy like jake hardy too i mean we don't know these guys very well um i don't really say their names that often but the bottom line is they got to hand the ball off they got to throw the ball to somebody and at 200 bucks it's 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 a nice pivot to to maybe if you want to in one lineup leave Corey clement out because look get gainwell and clement in the same lineup is probably going to be pretty popular, even though you might not need the salary. But switch Hardy in for one of those options, and then instead of Gainwell, switch uh, switch Huntley in. You know that kind of thing. That's how you can kind of be a little bit different because these aren't studs. We're not talking about Jonathan Taylor here. We're talking about right. third, fourth string running backs. Kenneth Gainwell has been a healthy scratch multiple times this year. These guys aren't studs. We don't necessarily know just because that they're starting and they're cheap that they're going to be locks. So so just consider that. Uh, anything else to add before we go to wide receivers? Uh, no. <clears throat> All right. So Devonte Smith, ninety eight hundred. Um, I think it's risky to play him. I don't see a reason. I mean, maybe maybe he starts the game just to get you know get some reps. I just don't know how much he's going to play at ten k. You've got Quez Watkins, Jalen Rieger. And Greg Ward. To me, I feel like Rieger and Ward are kind of the guys here that'll get most of the snaps, and maybe Quez Watkins as well for the Eagles. Do you agree with that, Ellie? Uh, are you scared to play Devontae Smith in a, in a situation like this where he could just come out and not even play? Uh, RG doesn't even add Devontae Smith in here either. That's so, interesting. Yeah, yeah that, that is really interesting. And honestly, I don't blame him. Um, Again, uh, J- the way that their offense works, you don't want to put Jalen Hurts in a situation where he's going to take an unnecessary hit. Um, right, the, you know, the week before the playoffs, he's going to be—they're going to be the seventh seed, right? It, it is what it is. And then, um, you know, Devontae Smith—he's—he's he's struggled a little bit with injuries uh, this year as well. So, um, being kind of a, a lankier guy, like I just—I don't know, man. I want to risk it. So, I, I think. Uh, we obviously need to keep an eye on it. We need to make sure that we, we have a decent grasp because uh, if those guys do end up playing, Devontae Smith can absolutely destroy a slate. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. you know, uh, we, we need to kind of understand what, what they're looking to do um, uh, on offense out in Philly. But I, I think we're going to have a pretty good idea. Again, there's very little incentive to get these guys out there and risk them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. I, I like Greg Ward, Jalen Rieger, um, you know, Quez Watkins is active. I like Quez Watkins. Uh, maybe maybe this player pool is outdated, and I need to update it because I, I don't even have Quez Watkins in this player pool. Really but, interesting. Yeah. That, that, yeah, but that's what I'm saying is like, I I think to me, <clears throat> Devonte Smith and Quez Watkins are the guys that probably wouldn't play. Maybe more Quez. Maybe Quez Watkins starts out the game, but Jalen Rieger, Greg, I mean, they're gonna have to put some players on the field. And, you know, why not put Rieger on the field who's, who's what is it, in his second year now that you want to see a little bit more out of him. You want to get, he needs, he needs the work. Um, so these are kind of guys that Greg Ward, that I think would get the most work. And, you know, Minshew is going to be back there throwing the ball to these kind of guys, most likely. Uh, when it comes to Dallas, <clears throat> you got Amari Cooper, 8,800, injury prone. Also, he's a COVID guy. You know, he, he at any given time, he, he's unvaccinated, I believe. Uh, so at any given time, he could get ruled out. Who knows? I don't know what their testing process is at this exact moment, but just keep an eye on that. 
Um, I'm more. I I don't think that they would play Amari Cooper in a situation like this. Maybe maybe the first quarter, maybe a few drives. It's just too risky to to put him out there, especially when you lose Gallup last week. You need these guys healthy for the playoffs. CD Lamb's ten point two k. I think CD Lamb starts the game. What do you think? Do you think that that's true? Yeah, I think he'll start. I I think we'll see the the one start for for Dallas, and they'll kind of feel out that first couple of drives. Yeah. Um, and determine what they want to do. But I think CD. I think Amari will be out there too. Yeah. Um, he had a pretty good week. If I had uh, to last week, if I had to choose between one of the the top two studs on this receiving core for Dallas, it's going to be CD Lamb, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's not as injury prone. He's younger. Amari Cooper. If you lose Amari Cooper for the playoffs for some weird reason, he turns his ankle or something, that is, you know, the fans are not going to be happy about it. Like, why did you play this guy? Yeah. Uh, so I really think that C.D. Lamb is an option. And look, I think we need to find a stud that over 10K that we could pay for because we're going to, there, there's going to be so much salary to, to, that we're leaving on the table. We can put a guy like C.D. Lamb in and have no problem. Uh, so look, Malik Turner at 1,000 is interesting. Cedric Wilson to me at sixty six hundred is another guy that they that they probably won't play a lot of. He's now Gallup. Uh, I don't think you need to risk him either. It's a guy like Malik Turner, Noah Brown. Those are kind of the guys. I mean, I I, I feel comfortable with playing those guys a lot. But in a situation like this, what we really need to talk about is you got to spread yourself out a lot on this slate and ne- and don't go too heavy on one player because there's just so much variance today. So talk to me about these other, um, you know, third, fourth string Dallas guys that we that we can talk about here. Yeah, man, um, I I think you're right on. I think you can kind of just rotate these pieces in there. Malik Turner, Noah Brown, um, to your point, uh, there's there's not going to be any issues with salary today. So I think you're right, and you can just pay up for C.D. Lamb and then just throw in one of these other guys. And then if you want, do the same lineup with uh, Amari Cooper and uh, rotate these other two guys in there. Um, yeah. I You know, I – yeah, just I think this is a good night to try and stick to Twitter too. Maybe watch some of the pregame shows, see if you can find stuff from beat reporters. We're gonna start hearing some random stuff like, oh, uh, let's see uh, how. Um, I mean, they could even play Dak for a quarter without CD and Amari uh, if you know if they're trying to be weird and just see you know test the uh, uh, connection with Cedric Wilson, Malik Turner, or Noah Brown for a drive or two. So yeah. things like that could absolutely open up this slate, and I think it's just something we need to be prepared for. Um, so uh, play all these guys. I think everybody is in play today until we hear anything otherwise. So uh, follow us on Titter. Uh, Titter. <laughs> Titter, yep. Uh, Titter uh, at Tyson J. Smith one and a- at Adubs King 24 we'll, we'll be retweeting and, and, you know, trying to figure out the same things that you guys want to know about as we go up into lock and also hit us up in the discord it's easy uh link is in in the bio below and that's where we just kind of sent we throw out some lineups we talk about our exposures things like that all right um so so tight end here so Hold on. Before, while you're while you're uh, pulling up the tight end thing there's one other guy i do want to call out J- oh, okay. Jace, if jj arcega whiteside is active I don't mind uh, throwing a Ar- couple. Ar- Arthega, like like he Arthega, yeah, yeah, JJ. If JJ is active, I don't mind taking a, a couple swings at him. Yeah, I don't know why um, he wouldn't be active. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, two hundred bucks. Um, and you know, he's kind of that guy who, who we hope could be explosive. We saw him a little bit last year when they were decimated with injuries at wide receiver. Um, you know, maybe this is his ch- chance to get back into that. Uh, Wide receiver room for the playoffs. And you see you see this number 31st against wide receivers, Dallas defense. That's something interesting yeah. to keep an eye on. So Dalton Schultz, 5,600. Uh, he's another he's another guy that we have to keep an eye on. Red zone monster. And he's he's been getting a lot of targets in that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in that Cardinals game, didn't he get a ton of targets in the first half? He had like seven, eight targets or something crazy. I, maybe I'm thinking of another guy. Yeah, he had 10 targets in that game last week. Um, yep. So, you know, it's something to think about with Dalton Schultz in the first half. If he can get you a red zone touchdown and six six targets or something, that's that's huge in a game like this. And you got Blake Jarwin coming back now. He's at 200 bucks. You know, maybe Blake Jarwin's the guy that, that plays in the second half. I think all these guys are in play. Uh, I don't know that I'm going down to Jeremy Sprinkle or McKeon because there's just so much value. I don't think I even need to touch these guys because the probability of them – 
paying up, you know, doing anything, not, not paying off, but just doing anything is very low. I'll just um, play Corey Clement. <laughs> yeah, just play Corey Clement. Like I would rather do that. To, you don't need two two hundred dollar guys in the slate together. You just don't. You just don't need it. Uh, and now that means uh, both Sprinkle and McKeon will have touchdowns. Of course today. they will. Of course. So Tyree Jackson for Philly. So uh, Dallas Goddard is out. Uh, Tyree Jackson for Philly at twenty six hundred. He will be the guy. And you also have Richard Rodgers who was elevated at two hundred. Uh, roll the dice, man. I don't know. I mean, look, we, we know the success that Goddard's had in, in this offense. Tyree Jackson, maybe he steps in and gets a touchdown. Maybe he gets a couple targets. I, I don't know. Maybe him and Gardner Minshew on the pre- uh, in practice for the scout team are getting, getting reps together. I, I don't know. But I think Tyree Jackson is an option. He's 2,600. He might kind of slip through the cracks with all this value. And he might be a guy that can, that can pull one out in the end zone. Uh, anything else to add before we move on? Yeah, I don't mind Richard Rodgers either. Um, two hundred bucks. Uh, again, I'm not going to take too many stabs here at the tight end position, just to be completely transparent. But two hundred bucks, he could be um, a pretty solid option. So correct me if I'm wrong, but Richard Rodgers was the one who caught that that uh, hail mary from Aaron Rodgers in in that yeah. uh, what was that like 2014 or something like that in in no, uh, two, Detroit 2015. Oh no, 2000. Yeah, I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. Anyways, uh, he's been around for for a minute, uh, but yeah, he's he's caught touchdowns before. He he can he can get it done. He's so, only 29. I just googled that shit by the way. Really? Wow. <laughs> yeah. what, was that like his rookie year or something? That's crazy. Yeah, it must have been. All right, Greg Zerline, Jake Elliott. These are guys you could count on pl- that will will be kicking throughout the entire game. So it's an interesting strategy here if you wanted to focus on guys that you know will be playing the whole game, and maybe you know maybe Minshew or maybe Cooper Rush they struggle in the red zone. Maybe we get you know four or five attempts for the from from these field goal kickers. I actually think you should prioritize the field goal kickers a little bit more than you usually would in this game because we know that they're going to play. Like that's yep. that's one of the, the usually it's the other way around. We don't know if they're going to get opportunities, but in this case, they will kick the ball if there's an opportunity to kick the ball. Now, one thing to think about if it's fourth and three from the fifty yard line or not fifty yard line, sorry, the forty yard line or something. They're not going to risk. They're just going to go for it. Or even the thirty-yard line. There's there's nothing to risk. Maybe they'll just go for it. Don't know. I don't know. But I think you can prioritize the kickers a little bit more. You got Greg Deleg who can make a fifty-yarder, no problem. Jake Elliott not, is, is not a bad kicker either. Both of these guys can score you thirteen fantasy points and kind of break the slate, right? Yeah, I'm with you on this one, man. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, I, I think having one kicker in the lineup is probably going to be optimal especially for low low field or smaller field tournaments and and cash or single entries i think a kicker in the lineup is is a safe bet for you with a with a higher floor than than a lot of these guys may have in this game because of the variance so defense cowboys 3800 eagles 3200 i think defense is going to get slept on a little bit in this game um but you're talking about cowboys going up against a backup quarterback and a bunch of you know no offense but a bunch of scrubs who aren't starters who knows Maybe the Cowboys, excuse me, maybe the Cowboys can come out and cause some turnovers. And same with the Eagles, you know, in the second half of a game going up against Cooper Rush. Maybe the Eagles can come out and, and, and play well. Kickers and defenses are in a lot, a lot higher play than I typically would rank them in a game like this, right? Um, I, I don't know. I think uh, I think I'm looking to be more with the field here. I'm not sure how much of the uh, defenses I'm going to get. I do think that both will have the opportunity to potentially put up points cowboys especially i mean what, what what's that new meme um uh Trevon Diggs is essentially uh the Jameis winston of yeah. uh, defense yeah you know so he'll go get a pick six and give up a touchdown but um you know you start getting those pick six you run into a four or five six seven sack type of night on top of that and they'll be in the optimal lineup yeah. so you get you really just determine what this is an essential night to kind of just put together what we've been doing all year and just focusing on game scripts Right, this is a night you're going to have to determine what you think is going to happen in that script, and you're going to need to play accordingly. Yeah. Um, if, if you if you if you think that the Cowboys are going to have a defensive stand tonight, then that's that's how you need to build your lineup and make sure that it correlates to that. Um, so that that's that's kind of my stance here on the defenses. If you think of it this way, you're going to get the good and the bad from the defenses, but the defenses will are, are they're not going to stop playing. They're not going to right. be on the bench. <laughs> so you, so you always if you have defenses you're always going to have a chance that something can happen later in the game. You're not going to be stuck with a zero or, or stuck with a guy on, on the sideline. It, do, it doesn't mean like play all defenses, but I'm just saying that they get a little bit of a boost because you know that they're going to earn points. 
especially if you start getting backup quarterbacks in there and backup players like the defense is a little bit different than offense you can kind of just like figure shit out as you go at times uh offense if you're not in a rhythm it's real easy to turn the ball over i I know we joked about this is kind of a preseason game it's it's not. I mean, this is a this is the end of the year for these teams. You're both going to the playoffs. You want to have some momentum. You want to have some, especially if you're the Cowboys. You want momentum going into the playoffs because you just got whooped at home by the Cardinals. You, well, in some of these backups, right? Or well, most of these backups, <clears throat> probably you, you're going to have options, right? So they're not going to go necessarily and get some play, actual playing time uh, next week in the playoffs. This might be the last taste that uh, you know they're the last image that they get to put out representing themselves to a GM or coach on another team or even their current team. Right. So, you know, don't, don't sleep on somebody doing something today because it's a contract. Yeah. And in, in preseason games, we usually see, you know, guys on the fringe of even making the team and, you know, at the end of the roster playing there, we're going to see NFL players who are established and some of some of who are veterans playing a lot in that second half and they're going to want to put some 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 of their you know plays on tape all right so let's let's keep going here so when it comes to fades i would just suggest we don't have a a fade that would be stupid for me to come out here and say anything like that i personally am not going to play jalen hurts i don't i I think the field will come along with me as we start to get news and get closer Um, maybe Devontae smith is a guy that i don't play i don't necessarily know that you need him but what I think the fades should be is don't go, just don't worry too much about salary. If you have five thousand left on the table on a slate like this, I don't think that's I don't think that's too much. You know, just it's game script. Yeah. Throw the prices out, maybe get one stud in there, and and move on. Uh, Ellie, what do you think about that? Do you agree? Yeah, I'm in a hundred percent agreement. I, I don't want to spend too much time trying to determine who I'm going to fade. There's no real need to do it. Um, there's going to be plenty of random periphery guys that are going to have an opportunity for a touchdown. Uh, they're going to be pretty low owned. Like I don't, I don't think JJ Arcea, Ar- Ar- Whiteside's coming in more than ten percent, and yeah. that might be enough to. To, to get you there tonight. Okay, so let's move on to lineup build. Now, interestingly enough, you can't really see this, but we have some alerts here. Carry on Johnson obviously was removed. Uh, Jalen Hurts' projection was removed. That that means something to me. Uh, Devontae Smith's projection was removed. Quez Watkins was removed. And Ito Smith is now getting uh, a projection. So... <laughs> To me, that that just shows like as like while we're doing the show, we, there's probably been some reports that have come out, um, but I think I, I just don't think you need to play the Eagles starters uh, like the top top guys in this game. I really don't think so. My, minus obviously Gainwell, who's not really a starter, he's just starting in this game, and some of those right. backup guys. All right, so let, let's build a lineup. Who who should we? I, I mean, captain wise, we can pick anybody we want here. I mean, anybody could absolutely crush Greg Ward at captain. Freaking Quez Watkins, if he does play. I mean, any of these guys. Or, or take a white side. I don't know, man. What do you think? Actually, uh, let's just let's go crazy. We haven't really done this all year. I, I want Gardner Minshew. I captain. love it, dude. I was already re- ready to click him. He, you know, Nick he's Sirianni gonna play the whole game. Nick pisses me off, dude. And and Nick Sirianni pisses me off. He he runs ninety percent of the time, and he's got Jalen Hurts out there. But it's it, like that one game that Gardner Minshew was out there. What did Gardner go like fifteen of fifteen? Uh, to yeah. open the game or some shit. Yeah, yeah they're they're gonna throw it. Um, and then let's let's throw in uh, uh, Dak and CD. Let's just get that out of the way. Okay, let's do Dak and CD. Now let's get Gainwell in here. We got to go Gainwell. Let's go Gainwell. Now this is this might be chalky. It could could be. I mean, maybe Dak Prescott and CD Lamb. Their ownership will dip. Maybe everybody thinks the same way we think, but. Uh, how can we get different here? Because this is kind of a popular lineup here. How can we get a little bit different? Uh, do we go with one of these weird two hundred dollars guys here? Um, I think this is a good. I I would honestly just do Greg Ward and Jalen Rieger, or Greg Ward and Arciaga Whiteside, or some variation of those. Uh, just two out of three. Yeah. Okay. What if we get a guy like? Man, we got so much salary, but like I said, it doesn't matter. A guy like Dalton Schultz or something, right? I mean, he's the kind of guy that could score a touchdown in the first half. I think right now we're too reliant on on the the, the starting starting guys from Dallas. I think we are. Mm-hmm. I think I think two uh, Dak and one starter with him may be the most I, I want to do. Uh, so maybe who can we go, who else can we get here? 
<laughs> we got 10, I mean, I, it, look, I mean, Blake Jarwin's fine too. Oh yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> Look at that. Right. 10,000 remaining. Uh, I don't care. Here, you know what? I'm going to save it just to just to prove that I don't care. <laughs> um, all right. So where, where, where do we go from here? Do you want to do a different build? Do you want to do like a little bit more of the Cowboy starters? How, how do you want to handle this? Yeah. You know what? Let's do this just because we haven't yet. Um, and we are – look, when – when we don't expect Zeke to get much volume, we're, we are going to have lineups that uh, prioritize him to some capacity. So I think let's do a let's do a Zeke captain to kind of just hedge what we're going to do here. Okay, here let's build real quick. Let's build with Zeke in the flex just while we have this. Okay, on. you got Dak, CD, and, and Zeke with Gardner and Gainwell. Um, we let's got drop th- Dak out of this lineup. Dak. Let's just go CD and. Uh, Zeke. CD and Zeke. Okay, so that leaves us with whatever we want. Uh, where do we want to go here? Do we want to get... Um, let's see. Who's the second? Uh, Quez Watkins is kind of risky here. Greg Ward is so cheap. Uh, defense. Where do we go here with these two last spots? Let's do this. What about... Let's throw in uh, Corey Clement. Okay. I kind of like that running back handcuff, to be honest with you, Zeke and uh, Clement. Both, and both, look, flex. Corey and and Kenneth Gainwell can catch balls out of the backfield. And Zeke, at this point, might might be getting some targets without without Tony Pollard as well. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't hate it having having uh, Gardner at captain with him. <laughs> Who else? So I guess now we need to go. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's throw in uh, Jake Elliott. Yeah, there you go. All right. There we go. Wait, why don't I have any kickers here? Go um, to excluded. They were under excluded when I was looking at it. Why? Why, why would they do that? Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, I'm going to reset the settings after this. <laughs> Ridiculous. All right, Jake Elliott. 12,000. <laughs> that's, a, that's a first for me. All right, let's, let's go Zika captain. I think the safest captain in this entire slate is either Gainwell or Minshew. Uh, more so Minshew because he's the quarterback and he's going to be on the field most likely the whole game. Mm-hmm. So let's go, <coughs> let's go Zeke. Where are you, Zeke? Man, he's priced down too, man. Crazy. All right, we're gonna let's do let's do one of uh, the notorious one fives and then we can do whatever you want after that. Okay. All right, now let's go uh, Gardner, Gainwell, uh. Jason Huntley, Tyrell Huntley, whatever the backup, oh, backup. running back is. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, let's throw in Greg Ward. I like Greg Ward tonight. I don't know why. Greg Ward. And then uh, Jake Elliott. Jake Elliott. There you go. And if you don't like Huntley, um, this actually isn't a terrible one to throw in the defense, uh, uh, Philly defense. Um, and then – Honestly, I mean, you can run Dak at captain too, run it back with the the exact same five and kind of rotate these pieces out too. Yeah, um, that'll be pretty contrarian on a slate like this. Uh, if I could suggest, if let's just say you had twenty five dollars to play with, do a couple twenty maxes, do a twenty five cent twenty max, like do your get as many different possibilities that you possibly can like i i'm not i would never do one lineup for tonight because all it takes is one weird decision from a coach to absolutely ruin your night put in as get in as many many 20 maxes as you possibly can the 25 cent the one dollar the t- even the 10 cent yeah. with nfl the 10 cent is is what is it it's a 2k 10 cent so what is that 200 bucks the first that's yeah, that's that's like pretty that. good it's better than the nba for sure all right so let's do a little bit more of a balanced Line up here with Zika Captain. Um, okay, so let's throw in Dak. Okay. Man, I mean, let's. Uh, I don't know if I can fade Gainwell though. No, just go ahead and put Gainwell back in. And then uh, we've been using a lot of Greg Ward. Let's throw in Jalen Rager. Yeah, we should definitely get some Rager. I want to get in some Malik Turner or Noah Brown too. Uh, even Cedric Wilson, I, there's a chance that Cedric Wilson is the number one guy, you, you know, with with uh, Rush in the second half, you know? So let's do this. Take out Gainwell, put in Cedric Wilson. Okay. 
And then throw in uh, Noah Brown or Malik Turner. And then we got a nice uh, 4-2. Yeah, and you just – I don't mind yeah. Minshew and Rager and then the other four. And then you can just switch, you know, kind of switch these guys out. One thing I would suggest is I, I personally want to have two quarterbacks going in these lineups because because of, you know, they're going to touch the ball quite a bit. And even if they play a half, it's, it's a little bit more of a guarantee that they'll get you some points as opposed to some of these other guys. All right. Let's do another captain that is not a starter here. Now, obviously, I think Kenneth Gainwell is going to be a very popular at captain, but I don't know. I mean, you don't you don't need to save the salary here. So I think there's other guys that can perform a little bit better without even thinking about the salary. So what do you think here, man? Do you want to do like a Greg Ward? Do you want to do Blake Jarwin? I mean, who, can we do a Cooper no. Rush? Like, what do you think? Let's do a, let's do a Greg Ward. All right, let's do a Greg Ward here. Hey, Greg Ward can throw for a touchdown, too. You never know, man. All right, so uh, let's get Gardner Minshew. I'm just gonna, I'm locking Gardner into if I If I do 100 lineups tonight, which I probably will, Gardner Minshew will be in, a, in 100 of those lineups, whether he's at captain or in the flex. Who do we want yeah. next? Um, We got Gardner. We got Ward. Let's throw in uh, Let's throw in Cooper Rush. Let's do it. And then Cooper, Cooper I, Cush. I, that's uh, Cooper yeah. Cup's uh, rap name. Rupert, Rupert, Rupert Kush. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and then uh, let's go, uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's go Blake Jarwin, Corey Clement, and then uh, Cedric Wilson. Corey Clement, Revenge Game, and Cedric Wilson. 21,000 left on the table. Screw it, man. I mean, bro, like if, if we're expecting a B team game, this, I mean, this is. This is the B team, the uh, offense. That's yeah. the second unit. So let's wrap this up for everybody. For, uh, Ellie, if people are just skipping to the end here after this line, these lineup builds, which is uh, totally okay, let's bring them back and, and give a summary as to what we're thinking here. Dallas starters, probably okay for a half or even a quarter, but still, you're gonna you, they, they could still pay off. Uh, we're avoiding Philly starters for the most part, like guys like Devontae Smith and obviously Jalen Hurts. And some of these, you know, Quez Watkins, even these kind of guys are probably not going to play much or if at all. So give us a quick summary as to your strategy, just what you think can happen. And also give us some tips to what to look for tonight before lock. Yeah, man. Um, so I think the primary thing to focus on is just determining what you think Dallas is going to do with uh, their potential seating uh, positions. Um, if you think they're going to come out and bust their ass and try and move up to that second seed. Um, then I think you can kind of rely on some of the starters here. Uh, otherwise, I think this is a good game just to, you know, prioritize random dudes and throw in guys that you think can go out and make an impact tonight, uh, just getting some extra run. Um, I think the the most important thing that we need to all do is just, unfortunately, stay glued to Twitter and any news feeds that we can find, local beat reporters, and just see what's going to happen. I mean, uh, just between the two different sites, you know, Fantasy Cruncher and RG, uh, one doesn't have uh, Devontae Smith and Jalen Hurts, and one does. Yeah. So, you know, there's some disagreement. Uh, maybe we have some updates to do because we've been on the show. Yeah. Uh, but either way, um, pay attention to the news. That's what's going to matter tonight. So this show will be premiering the second that I get off this show. I'm uploading and premiering it. I'll be in the premiere live chat as well as Ellie. So if you guys have questions, obviously, and obviously hit us up on Twitter for sure. All right. Take it easy, guys. We will uh, we'll see you for Sunday Night Football. We're going to do Sunday Night Football, too. Yeah. All right. See you for Sunday. See you guys later.